Hello and welcome to my podcast. I'm Aunt Ravi and today I want to share with you my personal journey with language learning. As someone who grew up in Sri Lanka, I had some unique experience that helped shape my ability to communicate effectively in different languages. Throughout the podcast, I'll be discussing the importance of oral language development and how it can impact a child's emergent literacy. Drawing from my own experience as an academic research, I hope to shed light on how language acquisition is a social and cultural process that happens through meaningful interactions. It all started when I was just an infant, unable to speak, but over time, I had countless opportunities to engage with language. My mother and I used to sing nursery rhymes in both Sinhalese and English, and it is one of my fondest memories. I can still remember singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Mary Had a Little Lamb while mother played the piano. We also sang similar rhymes like Rosa Malena Twekatu, a song about a child wanting a bee of the prickles on the rose stems. This experience not only improved my language abilities, but also improved my identity, developed crucial plea literacy skills and boosted my confidence to speak publicly. When I think of my initial exposure to different languages, I vividly remember my mother reading books to me in both English and Sinhala while singing and dancing. It was a fun and engaging way to learn new language and it is perfect example of how language learning goes beyond just memorizing words and grammar rules. As a child, I not only learned the words but also the body language and expressions that go along with them and it made the experience much more memorable and meaningful. This reminds me of the wise words of renowned psychologist Fellows and Oakley who said, Communication is not only spoken language and written language, but it is also about gestures, body postures, facial expressions, eye contact and body movement that helps to support and even replace the spoken language. When my family would sit down for dinner, it was always accompanied by music playing in the background. As my mother used to say, music is a universal language that connects people from all walks of life. Regardless of the language, music has a way of helping us relax, unwind, bond with others and culture. I could improve my speaking and listening skills in a secure and welcome setting by discussing about the relics with my family. That's why music is such an effective tool for teaching language literacy skills to the young learners in early childhood environments. By incorporating music into the learning experience, teachers can create a fun and interactive environment that engages children and helps them develop their language skills in a natural way. Oral storytelling was a tradition in my family and my grandfather frequently shared tales of his early years and experience in World War II. Through his stories, I learned how language could bridge the generation gap and connect people across time. I also gained an appreciation for the importance of narrative structure and character development, which laid the groundwork for my written expressions and reading skills. The great Russian psychologist Lee Vygotsky emphasized that language learning occurs through social interactions with more fluent speakers. My siblings and I used to sing and play together a lot when we were younger, which was very loud and physical. Through our play, I was able to improve my expressive language abilities and learn how to express my thoughts and ideas to others. Due to my bilingual upbringing, I had to learn how to communicate effectively in both English and Sinhalese. It was difficult for me when I found myself unable to communicate effectively with my members, uh, family members who spoke two different languages. I distinctly remember feeling frustrated, yet this experience made it clear to me how important it is to have both receptive and expressive language abilities as well as the flexibility to switch between languages to communicate effectively. As the Abru and Soto Manin pointing out, fostering children's language development requires the creation of a language-rich environment that promotes interactions and supports multilingualism. In conclusion, being bilingual is a great fortune for me. Those early experiences taught me the importance of interpersonal relationships, collaboration, and the role of education in creating a language-rich environment. This experience was priceless and memorable and have left a lasting impact on my life. I will always remember the lessons I learned while learning both the languages Sinhala and English. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast.